I'm here to read you this book called Your Place in the Universe. Now, the author and illustrator of this book, Jason Chin, has been a Caldecott honoree before, actually a Caldecott and a Siebert honoree, Your Place in the Universe by Jason Chin. He is dedicating this for Vanessa Ford. I would also like to thank Margaret Geller and Dr. Scott Kenyon of the Harvard Center for Astrophysics for their time and expertise. I could not have made this book without them. These kids are eight years old. They are about five times as tall as this book, but only half as tall. Now down at the bottom, it gives us some different details also. Eight-year-old. The average eight-year-old is about 50 inches. Now they say the average because some are taller, some are shorter. Inches are useful for measuring people and things that are smaller than people like books. But only half as tall as the ostrich. Ostriches are the tallest birds in the world and may grow up to be nine feet tall. So even though those eight-year-olds are taller than those five books, they're not as tall as an ostrich. That's taller than two eight-year-olds standing on each other's shoulders, but it's less than half as tall as, so the ostrich is 100 inches or 2.5 meters tall. But the ostrich is only half as tall as this giraffe. Giraffes are the tallest animals on land. The tallest giraffe on record was 19 feet tall, which is more than twice as tall as the tallest ostrich. But giraffes aren't the tallest living things in the world. When you measure something in feet, one foot is equal to 12 inches. Feet are useful for measuring things that are taller than humans, such as ostriches and giraffes. This giraffe is 17.4 feet tall. Look how many eight-year-olds it takes. The tallest living things are trees. The tallest trees on earth are California redwoods, and the tallest redwood is 380 feet tall. It's 20 times taller than the tallest giraffe, and it's still growing. But even it is not as tall as, so look at these trees real quick. This short one here, this oak is 100 feet. This Siba Kapok tree is 150 feet. This giant sequoia is 286 feet tall. The Australian mountain ash is 327 feet tall, but this redwood is 380 feet tall. But even it is not as tall as the tallest structures that humans have built. The tallest building in the world is even more than seven times taller than the tallest redwood. And people keep constructing taller buildings. But even these soaring skyscrapers are tiny compared to the Eiffel Tower is 1,063 feet. The Empire State Building is 1,454 feet. The Burj Khalifa is 2,717 feet. The Jeddah Tower under construction, its planned height plans to be 3,281 feet. Ooh, very interesting. But even these soaring skyscrapers are tiny compared to the highest peak on Earth. Mount Everest. Now, if you look down here, see where sea level is, see the buildings look so small compared to that mountain. Measured from sea level, Mount Everest is 29,035 feet high. That's about 5.5 miles, almost nine times the height of the tallest planned building. But even Mount Everest doesn't reach all the way. So Mount Everest is 29,035 feet above sea level. Mount Everest is the highest peak on earth measured from sea level. The tallest mountain measured from the base of the summit is Mauna Kea in Hawaii, but its base is below sea level. Its peak is 32,696 feet above the sea floor, 3,661 feet taller than Mount Everest, but most of it is underwater. Miles. Now this is a different way to measure. One mile is equal to 5,280 feet. Miles are useful for measuring longer lengths than feet, such as distance between cities, the lengths of river, or the height of Mount Everest. But even Mount Everest doesn't reach all the way to space. Although there's no exact height for the edge of space, it's commonly said to be 62 miles up. The International Space Station orbits 248 miles above sea level. That's 45 times as high as Mount Everest. 
but it doesn't seem that far compared to, so we have the exosphere from 440 to 6,200 miles above Earth's surface. The International Space Station is that little dot right there. It's the ISS orbits in the thermosphere 248 miles above Earth. Now, if you look down at this bottom page, there's the thermosphere from 50 to 44, 400 miles. The auroras, commonly known as northern and southern lights, auroras occur in the thermosphere. And then we have the edge of space, which is about 62 miles. The mesosphere from 31 to 50 miles. The stratosphere from 7 to 31 miles. The troposphere from to seven mile from the surface to seven miles. Meteors. Most meteors burn up when they hit the mesosphere. Mount Everest, do you see down here at the bottom the pictures? Mount Everest is about 5.5 miles. Airplane, jet airplanes often fly in the stratosphere. Clouds, nearly all clouds and weather occur in the troposphere. And then there's sea level. Earth's atmosphere, our planet, is surrounded by a blanket of gases or air called the atmosphere. The atmosphere has five layers, and the higher the layer, the thinner the air. We live in the troposphere, where the air is the most dense. The air in the stratosphere is too thin for humans to survive. Outer space begins in the thermosphere, where the atmosphere is extremely thin. The atmosphere completely disappears at the end of the exosphere, more than 6,000 miles above Earth's surface. Wow. That's 45 times as high as Mount Everest, but it doesn't seem as so far compared to the entire planet, Earth is 7,926 miles wide. That's 128 times the distance from sea level to the edge of space. From far away, the visible atmosphere looks like a thin blue film surrounding our planet, and the International Space Station doesn't appear very far away at all. Earth is enormous, but it's not so big compared to... Now, orbit satellites like the International Space Station travel around Earth in circular oval paths called orbits. Gravity keeps satellites in orbit around our planet. The Hubble Space Teles Telescope, 353 miles above sea level. Those are where they're pointing is where each of these things are. International Space Station, 248 miles above sea level. The edge of space, around 62 miles above sea level, and Earth is 7,926 miles across. Earth is enormous, but it's not so big compared to the orbit of the moon. The moon is 238,855 miles away from Earth. It's so far away that 29 Earths could fit between the two. It's so far that a jet plane going 500 miles per hour would take 19 days to get there. But even the moon is close by compared to, so a natural satellite. The moon is a natural satellite of Earth and it takes 27.3 days to make one trip around our planet. Gravity keeps the moon in orbit around the Earth. The moon is 238,855 miles from Earth, but even the moon is close by compared to the sun. Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. That's so far that a jet plane going 500 miles per hour would take more than 20 years to get there. It's so far that sunlight takes eight minutes to reach Earth and light travels 186,000 miles per second but Earth is one of the closest planets to the sun. So looking at all the details on this series, average distance from the sun, 257 million miles, Mars. Average distance from the sun, 142 million miles. Mercury, average distance from the sun, 36 million miles. Venus, average distance from the sun is 67 million miles. Earth and moon, average distance from the sun, 93 million miles. And then there's an asteroid belt that goes out around that. The inner planets, the four closest planets to the sun, are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. They are known as the terrestrial planets because they are made of rock and metal and have solid surfaces. Beyond the inner planets are hundreds of thousands of rocky asteroids in the asteroid belt. The largest object in the asteroid belt is the dwarf planet Ceres. The speed of light. Light travels 186,000 miles per second. That's so fast that a beam of light could circle Earth seven and a half times in one second if it could be made to travel in a circle. Nothing can travel faster than light. There are five planets beyond Earth. The farthest is Neptune, which is 30 times farther from the sun than Earth is. 
The dwarf planet Pluto is 40 times as far, which is so far that sunlight takes more than five and a half hours to reach it. Pluto is part of the Kuiper Belt, which has billions of comets and four dwarf planets, but that isn't the end of our solar system. Scientists believe there are trillions of comets beyond, Kuiper, beyond the Kuiper Belt. The farthest of these could be 100,000 times farther from the sun than Earth is. It takes sunlight more than a year to travel that far, which would make the edge of our solar system more than a light year away. But our solar system is a tiny speck compared to the size of... So now it's going to show you all these different planets. I'm going to zoom in so that you can read about each one of them. So, but our solar system is a tiny speck compared to the size of our galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is 100,000 light years across and contains more than 100 billion stars. One of them is our sun. <clears throat> there are so many stars that from a distance they blend together and look like swirling clouds of light. We are about 27,000 light years from the center of the galaxy, which means that even if you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you 27,000 years to get there. But that's nothing compared with the distance to now, as you can see, there's Sagittarius A, which is the black hole, the center of the Milky Way, and then here's our solar system. The Milky Way galaxy. Galaxies are groups of stars that are held together by gravity. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy, and just as the planets in our solar system orbit the sun, the stars in the Milky Way orbit the center of the galaxy. Hidden in the center of the Milky Way is a black hole called Sagittarius A, pronounced Sagittarius A star. Oh which is four million times more massive than the sun. But remember, that's nothing compared with the distance to the Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda is the closest large galaxy to us, but it's 2.5 million light years away. It would take you 2.5 million years traveling at the speed of light to reach Andromeda. Andromeda and the Milky Way are part of a galaxy group called the Local Group. It has roughly 50 galaxies and is spread across millions of light years of space, but galaxy groups are small compared to galaxy clusters. Galaxy clusters are much larger than galaxy groups. The Virgo cluster is the largest galaxy cluster near us. It has around 2,000 galaxies and is roughly 50 million light years away, but it's not the only one. Many galaxy clusters and groups surrounded Virgo, surround Virgo, and all together they are known as the local supercluster. But even our supercluster is just a tiny part of. So, as you can see, there's the Andromeda, which is 2.5 million light years from Earth. There's the Milky Way. There's a local group. There's the Virgo cluster. Looking back in time, Andromeda's light takes 2.5 million years to reach Earth. This means that when we look at Andromeda, we are seeing light that left 2.5 million years ago, and the image that we see is 2.5 million years old. We're looking back in time. The farther you look, the farther away you look, the farther into the past you'll see. You look at the sun, you'll see it was eight minutes ago. You're looking eight minutes back in time. If you look at Andromeda, you'll see 2.5 million years back in time. If you look at Virgo, you're seeing 50 million years into the past. How cool is that? Now, just remember though, even our supercluster is just a tiny part of the cosmic web. Huge chains of galaxies, millions of light years long, are strung throughout space. Clusters of galaxies are found where the chains meet, and between the galaxies lie vast empty regions called voids. This pattern is called the cosmic web, and it extends for billions of light years in all directions, like a giant three-dimensional net. These are the largest structures in so this is a local supercluster. We may be located in a void like this one. The cosmic web. This illustration depicts the pattern of voids and chains of galaxies that make up the cosmic web, but not the actual position of the galaxies. Evidence suggests that our supercluster is located within a large void for sure, but we don't know for sure. These are the largest structures in the universe. The universe is everything, every star and every galaxy, every planet in all of space. It's the grandest environment we know of, and it may go on and on forever, but we don't know if it does. We don't know because the farthest thing we can see is around 13 billion light years away. Everything within this distance is called the observable universe. It's the region of space that we can see.
So this is the edge of the observable, observable universe. This is as far as we can see from Earth, around 13 billion light years away. And you see, this is where we are right here. But this is not the center of the entire universe, just the center of the part we can see, the observable universe. The observable universe is the part of the universe that we can see from where we are. This region of space is enormous and it's estimated to contain two trillion galaxies, but the universe extends beyond what we can see. The observable universe is centered on us, but we are not in the center of the entire universe. It's the region of space that we can see from where we are. In the vast cosmic web, in the Milky Way, in the solar system, there is a small blue planet called Earth. Earth is the only planet that we know of with life. It's the only planet we know of with trees, giraffes, and ostriches. It's the only planet we know of with kids who can look up and imagine their place in the universe. And then it gives us a little bit more information about the universe and the planet and the solar system. And even more as well. I hope you, when we get back to school, that you'll check this book out in the library and read some of the smaller details that I was not able to share with online. Have a great day.